Hey guys, Clint here with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range and we've got ourselves another discussion based topic and guys it is 223 versus 556 and you know this is one that has just been kind of like up there. I've heard it in gun shops all the time. When I first started getting into shooting I said hey what's better 556 or 223? Oh they're the same thing, you're fine. Okay, well, after now a few years being in the industry, a few years being service, and a few, quite a few years just being a gun enthusiast, I've learned that they are quite simply not the same thing. So let's talk about 223 versus 556. And what I've got right here on the bench, this is some PMC Sierra match grade ammo, 77 grain. This is a 223 cartridge. What I have on the clip here, by the way, Let's just go ahead and throw this out here. This is a clip. This is a magazine. Let's continue. Anyway, what I've got on here is pretty much what I am issued. So I'm Lake City 62 grain green tip 5.56 ammo. Now the exterior dimensions and everything about this little guy, these little guys are pretty much the same. All right, pretty much. Now. The military, when they contracted 5.56 NATO, and this is you know the round that they wanted to go with, one thing that they did do that's a little bit different than the 223 Remington, unless I am unaware of any new cartridges that do the same thing now, they actually have a what's called a crimped primer pocket. The pocket that actually holds the crimping, or the crimp, or excuse me, the pocket that actually holds the primer in place is crimped to prevent any type of backing out or anything like that because, well, and military is not exactly the easiest on anything, and that includes their munitions, all right? As far as I know, any recent 223 ammo uh, doesn't have a crimped primer pocket. It's not really a bad thing. I've never heard of an issue. Put it this way, I'm not gonna say I've never heard of an issue. I've never witnessed an issue for myself where the primer actually just fell out of the case. Let me know down in the comments if you have though, if you've seen such a thing, and what ammo it was, just so I know for my own personal well-being. But anyway, the exterior dimensions of these guys aren't really all that different. So again, this one being the 5.56, this one being the 77 grain 223. One thing you might notice that might be a little bit different is because of the weight of the 77 grain 223, the bullet itself might be a little bit longer, it might be a little bit difficult to tell, right? The projectile itself, now deep down in here, might be a little bit longer, right? So moving the O guy further back will help increase the weight of this guy. Now what's the ogive? The ogive is the actual part where the brass pretty much meets up right with the neck, right? That's pretty much it. Okay, uh, a couple other things that you can kind of tell that are a little bit different on the 556 versus the 223, obviously other than this one being painted green, uh, doesn't really mean much honestly, but you might notice too that you've got some indentations going right around the neck, right at the ogive. Right, it might be very difficult to pick up. I'm not sure how that'll show for you guys, but there's some indentations there, uh, right out, right on the base of the bullet, right at the O guy. All right. Other than that, though, you you could see that elsewhere on different types of ammunition, uh, but that's just again how it's manufactured from different manufacturers. All right. Now let's talk about what really is the difference between these two. Let's just say these actually both weigh the same weight, 62 grain, 62 grain. I mean, the fact is it's 77 grain, but let's just say for this instructional purpose, they're both 62 grain uh, bullets, all right? The really only difference is the pressure that these generate. Uh, now, the military tests their pressures a little bit different than like SAMI spec, S-A-A-M-I, which is pretty much like the civilian use of pressurizations and ammunition uh, conditions, I guess you could say. But really, uh, if they were tested about the same, the 5.56 cartridge generates about 62,000 PSI, where your 223 cartridge generates between about 50 to 55,000, all right? So quite a bit difference in PSI, and that's really what the ultimate difference is between these two cartridges. Now, that's really not, I guess you could say a lot, especially when the exterior dimensions are all the same, but what it really comes down to is your actual rifle or AR pistol or whatever it might be. That's really when it starts getting down to the nitty gritty of you wanting to know what your rifle is chambered in. Now, a lot of them, this actually isn't probably the best one to show because you can't really see any of the barrel stampings or anything like that. You can just see how dirty it is. But typically, on your barrel, for most manufacturers, they will actually 
let you know, they'll show that, hey, it's either a two, two, three or five, five, six, and then it'll give you a twist rate as well. A one and seven, one and eight, one and nine. It even goes up to one and 12. The first ones were one and 14 twists, believe it or not. So really what it comes down to is the chambering of your rifle because the chambering is what's designed to withhold that pressure. 5.56 five, guns can shoot 223 Remington without a problem, but you can say there's an issue with shooting 5.56 five, through 223 Remington guns. So me personally, I've never actually witnessed or heard of like a gun blowing up on them because of the overpressurizations of a 5.56 five, cartridge in a 223 gun. But if you guys have, again, I wanna see you guys down in the comments. This is a learning experience for hopefully all of us here, all right? So what is the difference in the chamberings? A 5.56 chambered rifle actually chambers, I think we're talking, no, I know, we're talking literally thousandths of an inch, thicker and longer, all right? So where the actual bullet sits in the chamber, right in here, that little messy area, Oh yeah, that is messy. Uh, you've been shooting it with the can on, so yeah. But anyway, right where it sits in here on a 5.56 gun, it is literally thousandths of an inch, a little bit thicker all around, and also a little bit longer, designed to handle those higher pressures of the 5.56 NATO cartridge. Now, granted, the 223 Remington, which can be shot through here, a lot of people say you actually might be losing out on accuracy and velocity because of that thicker, wider chambering, that it might be actually losing some of its oomph behind it, right? Some of the gases or whatever. Um, I don't know. I haven't really used 223 or 556 for a whole lot of distance shooting other than Marine Corps going out at the 500 yards, but we've always shot 62 grain 556. So hard for me to really give you guys some honest information or feedback about that. But again, I'm sure a lot of you guys that are our viewers, I know that a lot of you are, are competitive shooters. Do use 223-556 for some distance shooting. You do have rifles that you got set up on your own and you might be running 223 all day long like the Sierra Match 77 grain for some way on out there excellent accurate shootings so let me know i want to hear from you guys down in the comments of course let me know what your thoughts are behind all this now shooting a 223 through a 556 i've already talked about it can do it shooting a 556 however through a 223 chambered gun the 223 isn't as prepared or I guess you could say made to handle the pressures of the 5.56 cartridge. But like I said, I personally have not witnessed there being an actual issue shooting this. Now I can imagine over a period of time of shooting nothing but 5.56 through a 2.23 uh, chamber, maybe over time those overpressures and that you know constant berating of that chamber by the heavier pressured 5.56 uh, round could cause some issues in the long run, kind of like shooting steel versus brass which is a whole other whole other video don't even start commenting on that we'll, we'll get on that later but for instance these two right here are what we're all talking about today now just for a little bit of fun science experience experiment let's see i hope this picks up for you guys as well as i think it's going to pick up for us i want to shoot about two or three rounds of the 62 grain green tip through this Surefire SOCOM 5.56 RC2 suppressor on my 10 and a half inch, 10.3 inch barrel Mark 18 Daniel Defense. Let's take a couple of shots with it real quick and let's see if that heavier 223 cartridge makes a different sound signature. Let's, let's try it out and see here. Let's go ahead and chamber one up and uh, you know I'm not using any hearing protection during this. It's still not super quiet. I'll go ahead and throw it out there. I've shot this quite a bit now. So it still has quite a bit of a sound signature, but it's not so bad and for just a couple of shots it's not going to be causing any type of damage but let's go ahead and check it out let's take a couple of shots here just 62 grain green tip let's just do three three shots sounds pretty good to me it sounds more like if a uh, kind of like an air compressor almost you know uh coming apart so it's got more of like a splash sound to it right so let's see about that 77 grain and let's see how that pairs up here. Let me grab a couple more of these guys. By the way, the PMC stuff, it's good stuff. It's good ammo all around. I've never had an issue with 70, or excuse me, an issue with uh, PMC ammo, and that's no matter the caliber. All right, so let's take just a couple of shots of this nice, pretty 77 grain. 
Now, this being a 5.56 chambered gun, can run the 223. I don't have to worry about that. Let's see if we notice any difference in sound signature. So notice, what I'm noticing is it sounds like it's a little bit higher pitched. It doesn't sound like it has more of a crack to it like the 5.56 did. So again, having a heavier bullet, 77 grain versus 62 grain, slows the bullet down just a little bit, which is kind of nice because those gases are having to work a little bit harder to force that heavier projectile out the barrel. So pretty cool stuff. Oh man, shooting is, well, I lost that one. Oh well, I'll find, oh, nope, found it. Just planting some freedom seeds. But anyway, shooting is a heck of a lot of fun, guys, especially when you start breaking down all this uh, science type stuff, right? Oh yeah, pretty sweet. All right, so again, I wanna hear from you guys quite a bit the differences between 223 and 556 and whether or not you can run 556 to a 223 chambered gun or shouldn't you? Or, and also, do you lose out on accuracy and velocity shooting a 223 through a 556? If, you know, I had a way of measuring all of that out here, we'd have a pretty fun day out here doing that. Uh, but maybe one day in the future, we'll have a part two and actually get real scientific about that. If you'd like to see that, let us know down in the comments, all right? Anyway, until then, I'll see you guys down there. But uh, there's one last thing I wanna talk about. This guy, this right here is the 6.5 Creedmoor. We also have a whole video talking about 6.5 Creedmoor and how effective that is. So if you've got questions on that, go check that video out. But this right here is a 6.5 Creedmoor chambered SCAR 20S in black, yep, camo. Is it a camo? No, not really. But is it also our secret code word? Yes, yes it is. Where can you enter this code word to get extra entries? Classicfirearms.com, hit that top banner, and it's gonna take you to a second web page that's gonna show you all sorts of different ways to get your entries in, one of which is entering in that code word. Don't miss out on your opportunity to take this bad boy home. This thing is sweet. Oh, super sweet. Trigicon 10 mile 3 to 18 by 44 optic. The Zeiss rings, which I am a huge fan of. It's pretty awesome. Go check out our video announcing this as our giveaway. Ryan did some like super magic work, made a super theatrical like intro. I felt like I was watching a movie trailer until I saw my goofy self so show up. So go let me know down in the comments on that video what you guys think about that and go get your entries in for the SCAR 20S at classicfirearms.com and God bless you all.